we landed at Swansea, Wales, and got on a train that took us up to Staffordshire in England. And we stayed up in Staffordshire for seven and a half weeks waiting for our barracks to be completed, quote unquote, uh, where we were to be stationed. And that was just outside of London. And we finally got there. Uh, and that was before the second blitz. After that, we were bombed every night. That was not fun and games. It was pretty scary at times, but you get used to everything. We learned to uh, anticipate when we went to bed, when we're ready to go to bed at night, like say nine o'clock, uh, if we hadn't been raided by that time, we knew we could go to bed and the planes would be back maybe in a couple of hours. So what I used to do is I'd go to bed with my overcoat on the very top of my blanket with whatever I wanted with me in the pockets of my overcoat so that when the siren went off and I had to go to the air raid shelter, I could just slide out of bed into my, with my pajamas on, into my overcoat and into the air raid shelter with everything I needed or my, whatever my worldly possessions were in my pockets. And that was it, Did they every have night. An air raid shelter by the barracks? Oh yeah, yeah. We all had air raid shelters. It wasn't too comfortable. They were made out of, in fact, I have pictures of them I could show you. They were brick, concrete, not heated, pretty drafty. There's an entrance at each end, plus an escape hatch that you could kick out. And it's a bench out of concrete. As I say, not very cozy, but safe. But they bombed all around us, fortunately never hit us. We were lucky, really. Were you able to examine any of the damage on, after some of the air raids? Oh sure, we saw it all the time. If we went into town or into London, or even into the little, uh, not little, the, the uh, community that was nearest to us, Kingston, you could see spaces where it had been bombed out the night before. No, that was, that was normal. You didn't even think anything of it. It's part of life. Oh, they got bombed last night. As I say, it's part of life, really. Funny how you do accept things sometimes. Sometimes we would be driving down the road and the V1s would go over us. You could see them sputtering overhead. It was interesting. Not on us, of course. Fortunately, that was during that time that the V1s were landing all over England. It was such a go sometimes. And the V1s, I mean, they made a distinct sound. Yes, some of them did. There were three different kinds. One of them was but, 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 until it landed. One of them shut off before it landed. And one of them, I forget what the other one did. But, uh, there were three different kinds, I remember that, before they crashed and blew up something. But you could see them, the little flashes like Christmas lights. And those were generally in the evening that they came up? Yeah, yeah, always, always. That was before the V2s, the V2s were deadly. Those were rockets. You didn't hear them or see them, they just landed. And that, uh, the V2s and the V1s, I mean, was that basically the whole time you were in England? Did oh, you yeah. experience those? That was in addition to the plane bombings. As I say, it was noisy at times. You get used to everything, though. So, I mean, for a, a bombing raid after, after so, I mean, I would imagine the first time it's scary, but you, you tend to just get used to it and it becomes a part of life. It becomes a part of life, but you don't get used to it. Because I can remember times that I was at a, a movie, or it could have been a vaudeville show. They had their big on vaudeville shows, or they were then in England. Uh, you'd be at a show, and on the side of the stage, they had air raid alert warnings. If it was green, it was clear. But when the, an air raid was, when the planes were approaching, 
certain distance, it went yellow. And when they got within a certain distance, it went red. That meant you should be at the shelter. And if you were a little slow in getting out of your seat and out of the theater and to the shelter, you could get caught in the street. And it happened to me a couple of times. And it's very scary, I'll tell you. When you have it bombing all around you and shattered glass and everything crashing all around you, and there's nothing you can do about it, just stay put. Because you didn't make it to the shelter. It's part of life. Very scary, but it is part of life. So if you got caught in between, they would close the shelter? And no, they wouldn't close the shelter, but you just didn't make it there. Okay. You'd duck into a doorway someplace. Any place that was shattered cover. And so you actually lived through being in a doorway? Oh, yeah. With glass crashing all around. Yeah, I can remember it well, unfortunately. And I'm sure other people had the same experience. Uh, mine wasn't unusual. As I say, you were supposed to pay attention to those signs on the side of the stage. And if you didn't, you were in trouble. You were supposed to get out of there when the time was right. Not wait till the end of the movie or something. And that happened to you a few times? Yeah. yeah. Well, the stage show is almost over. You know, another two minutes won't matter. It did. You don't learn. You're young. Foolish. <laughs>